Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a closer look at the Cat S22 Flip. No, this isn't referring to the animal, but rather Caterpillar, which is a brand known for industrial machinery, including tractors, and in the mobile space, they have created quite a few rugged phones some which tout functionality including infrared cameras for scanning things and thermal imaging as well, but the S22 Flip remains as one of the few devices that you can find with a flip phone form factor but still running on Android operating system, and especially here in the United States, it happens to be one of the most cost-effective Android flip phones you can find. For new, it goes for around $65, but often can be found at cheaper than that. It will be shockproof, drop-resistant, as well as waterproof, so despite the nostalgic form factor, you're still able to run modern apps on it, including accessing the Play Store for installing social media tools, including WhatsApp, just as an example. So taking a closer look at the design here first, as a rugged phone, it is going to be a bit more chunky versus typical clamshell as well as flip phone devices such as the Nokia 2760 that we also reviewed recently. That being said, you don't have the military as well as water resistancy of the Cat S22 Flip. It also lacks a touchscreen, which is found on this Android power device, a slightly more again, advanced operating system. That being said, the processing and guts are actually quite similar. They're both powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 200 series processors. The S22 Flip is the Snapdragon 215, which is a quad-core 1.3 gigahertz chipset, and it's coupled with two gigabytes of RAM. Both of these phones come equipped with Wi-Fi, built-in GPS for location tracking services, as well as Bluetooth, and our 4G LTE smartphones. The Cat S22 can be found unlocked or with T-Mobile here in the US. Other Android-powered flip phones that we've seen in the past have included the ZTE Symbol T. It has a slightly larger 3.5-inch display compared to the 2.8-inch panel on the Cat S22 Flip, which is a bit more petite, but as a result, you can tell that this phone is a little bit longer, though in terms of thickness, they're actually not too far apart. Here it is next to it side by side. Another recent Android flip phone that we checked out would be the... Samsung Galaxy Golden aka W series, the W2016, a slightly older model, but this kind of is the opposite in that it tries to bring a much more powerful experience into this retro, nostalgic flip phone form factor. Like other higher-end Samsung Galaxy phones, it's using an AMOLED display instead, as well as housing an octa-core processor, which is much more performant. That being said, it's definitely catered for a different demographic. This is for folks that want performance, but still a unique form factor in their device, also meant for certain maybe executives, business professionals that are still clinging onto kind of this design of the past, a bit more sleek, versus again the cat phone really meant for folks that want something really durable. But regardless, here they are side by side, and maybe one final comparison I'll just mention is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip phones, which are of course our folding display phones, though one can argue it's the antithesis of the Cat S22 because this is a folding screen that might be more delicate and fragile. Still, it's pretty cool to see this form factor making a bit of a soft re-emergence of sorts. I have to admit that hanging up a phone call just by flipping the phone shut is kind of iconic and satisfying. Plus, it protects the screen on the inside from getting scratched up when you're placing it in your pocket. So a closer look at the hardware on the right-hand spine, there's access to a volume rocker as well as a flap covering up the USB Type-C port for charging, taking about an hour and a half to fully recharge. 2000 milliamp hour capacity battery and speaking of the back cover is removable but it requires a coin to kind of pull out the screw on the side there just for added resistance to elements including water for instance you also find the sim card slot and micro sd card slot behind the cover which can augment the 16 gigabytes of built-in storage which is sufficient for the android 11 go operating system that it comes with out of the box it's a slightly more lightweight version of android with applications requiring less memory as well as fewer animations to run on a slightly weaker processor like this more entry level there's also a push to talk walkie talkie button on the side that can be remapped to other controls accented in orange and that's it. So a very kind of sturdy feeling phone. There's also an optional dock accessory that you can find if you really wanted to kind of charge it by popping it in. Again, similar to an industrial walkie-talkie, although one doesn't come included out of the box. Also, like most rugged phones, it's coated in a layer of soft touch rubber, making it quite easy to grip. And on front, you'll find the speakerphone quite loud and front facing, along with a 1.4 inch IPS display that can show some basic info, including mixed calls. And also up top, we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash. On the inside of the phone, by the way, we do have a 2 megapixel front facing camera, so you are able to still use this for video conferencing purposes. 
That is one other hardware advantage compared to the KaiOS flip phones, which are cheaper but don't have any front-facing lenses to work with. You also find the earpiece, and then down below, the keypad is quite spacious with plenty of travel. It is backlit, making it pretty easy to see in the dark, and oversized buttons that are tactile and responsive to press on, along with a four-way navigation toggle with an OK key, talk, and end keys, and conventional Android hotkeys, including multitasking, as well as going back and home can be found here as well. With that being said, one hardware limitation of the S22 Flip is it does not come with a built-in NFC, so unfortunately contactless mobile payments won't be feasible on this particular model. A closer look at the software experience, what surprised me is despite very entry-level specs, it seems mostly fluid and responsive. Well, that's probably helped by the less pixel-dense display, which is, by the way, 480 by 640 so it doesn't have to, again, use the GPU as much to power the graphics on a already pretty small screen, along with the more efficient Android 11 Go operating system. And the Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protecting the screen as well feels quite smooth as you're swiping around. We have the standard Google Apps built on in, and from Cat's side, there's not too much customization here going on. There's just kind of a support tool. There is an FM radio tool on here as well, which can be handy, although there is no standard 3.5mm headphone jack on this model, unfortunately. Now there is going to be a toolbox similar to other rugged smartphones we've reviewed in the past, but interestingly on this one it seems to be more of a bookmark to the browser rather than being built directly onto the phone's storage. So applications including, say, a decibel meter, as well as being able to know if the phone is level or not, things like that. So I do kind of wish they would have just installed it directly on the phone, since the web app version may not be always reliable, as you can tell there, and requires an internet connection to access. But on the flip side, it takes up fewer resources on the phone itself. You can also use it as a form of a digital detox device or a backup phone if you want to just be very light only using it for making calls, for example, or perhaps purposefully restricting use of certain apps like gaming, breaking free from some of those habits, even though this is really a smartphone in a flip phone form, as we've talked about. Taking a closer look at the settings here, there are a few customizations done by Cat. A couple of custom wallpapers from Cat. They all look relatively attractive, and the display as a whole, again, is really not shabby. At least it is an IPS LCD screen compared to the TN panel found on the Nokia 2760 flip. So that means viewing angles on this device are going to be superior. If you're tilting it from different angles, the colors don't really wash out. That is, despite the fact that it's not a fully laminated screen, though, so there's a slight gap between the glass and the LCD inside, meaning it does cast still a little bit of reflections. However, overall, it's not not too bad. Again, responsiveness is actually quite alright. Not to mention that the brightness levels are very satisfactory in my usage. Even when there's a bit of sunlight hitting on the screen, I found it to be still more than visible enough. And the 16 gigs of built-in storage, around 30 to 40 percent is occupied by the operating system when you first take it out of the box, leaving you with just a little under 10 gigabytes free. So again, not a ton, even though it's really a lightweight version of Android. And subsequently, if you are planning on adding more media files on this phone, definitely would recommend plugging in a SD card to augment that space. You can also set up a password or PIN for unlocking the device for security, although there is no additional biometrics including a fingerprint scanner on this particular unit. You can also access the programmable key from here, so that is that orange accented large button, which ironically enough we also see on Ultra devices like the Apple Watch Ultra introducing a similar functionality, but here it is on a ultra cheap phone, but here we're able to trigger commands like push to talk walkie talkie, what a double tap can correspond to, you can assign to functions including the flashlight, as well as waking up the device, triggering the Google Assistant, or launching any application that you have available on your phone, as you can tell there, as well as a long press can trigger one more command as well. So it is relatively easy to assign. Here's a quick demo of a double tap, and again that flashlight will be turned on. Everything else though is pretty much faithful to stock Android, including digital well-being controls, you can also check to see if there's any occasional firmware updates. That being said, it seems like CAD have not released a OS level upgrade to the S22 Flip as of the time of this video here in 2024, and this phone came out kind of in the second half of 2022, so it seems unlikely that we'll get an OS upgrade. Also, unfortunately, kind of the norm for phones that are in the sub $100 price range. And sure, some of the animations aren't going to be instantaneous. You'll see some slight moments of hesitation compared to a snappier, more performant, phablet, large screen smartphone. But for the most part, just giving it a second to load, things are still going to work without too many problems, I'd say. 
Overall, don't expect miracles, but it certainly is functional for just snapping some quick shots when you're trying to capture uh, something in an emergency. It will serve that purpose. It is autofocus. Again, you do have that LED flash, and under settings here, you can turn on features including geotagging. And when it comes to recording video, you can capture up to HD 720p resolution, which is also, I think, good enough for just a small flip phone like this. But that is basically it. You don't have additional controls like HDR or any advanced pro mode options on this phone, but that is more than good enough, I'd say. And the front-facing camera similarly also works, uh, again, located on the top for just some quick communication purposes, as long as you have a good amount of light around you. Here's a quick glance at some of the sample images. And what we can tell is when you have, again, good enough lighting and outdoor conditions, the results are still going to be overall satisfactory enough, I would say. Of course, again, lack of HDR means you're not going to have a ton of details in some of the darker contrast regions, but for textures, including the tree branches, if you're trying to capture, say, a document, things like that, text details can still be legible. It does the job when you just want to snap something very quickly and kind of works as intended there. The phone, by the way, does have an accelerometer or motion sensor, so if you are tilting it sideways, the screen will rotate as well, as you can tell, which might give you a slightly larger experience uh, when you are viewing in this horizontal perspective. Now, in terms of some quick settings in the drawer up top, it's pretty standard. Aside from wireless options, you can also turn on adaptive brightness. There is a proximity light sensor that knows your ambient surroundings and will make the screen a little bit brighter versus dimmer accordingly. Other basic settings, including a focus mode, a dark theme, as well as hotspot can all be triggered, and even screen recording is built on in here as well. A couple notes here is if you want to use the T9 style layout, you can use predictive text. But thankfully, you can also opt for the full QWERTY layout using the touchscreen up top, which is a standard Gboard and also supports swipe as well. And alternatively, you can use voice input, which might be faster still for a kind of communicator style device like this. You can also try rotating the screen, by the way, and have a horizontal view for the keyboard. By default, it is going to be a little bit uh, on the minimize view to still show you what you're typing on, but you can change the settings just by enhancing the size. So for example, let's tap on this and pull out the keyboard just to make it a little bit larger. And now playing back a video here by cranking up the volume. Takeaway being that the speakerphone quality is actually excellent. It is extremely clean and crisp sounding, with surprisingly a touch of bass as well. It doesn't really distort even at higher levels, making it a pretty decent choice just for, again, consuming a bit of media. It's also pointing forward at you when you're holding it like this. Uh, that being said, it is a single speaker as opposed to being stereo, but again, for a phone that is so low cost, won't ding it too much there, and ultimately makes for a pretty good speakerphone in most scenarios. Again, the screen here, I have to say, is doing a little bit better than expected. Expected. It is, of course, much smaller compared to most modern screens that we've gotten used to, but for just a 2.8 inch panel, it is surprisingly still usable with a bit of practice. And again, the touchscreen digitizer is at the very least pretty responsive as you're navigating around. It's just some of the icons are going to feel a little bit smaller. So perhaps they could slightly increase the screen size in a next generation model. Here's also a quick example of what web browsing feels like. So we have the standard. Uh, kind of Chrome browser over here, and if we go into a site, let's try it loading up The Verge and see how that fares. Again, you have to expect slightly slower loading speeds versus a faster processor, but considering this is a quad-core, again, Snapdragon 200 series chip, I am, for the most part, still quite impressed by the phone's performance here, even though it isn't the fastest thing that we've ever used. And you can tell that the reception quality also tends to be quite strong with dual band Wi-Fi as well as 4G LTE. So staying connected is generally not an issue, which of course is an important aspect of a rugged phone like this. If you're outdoors in more wild terrain, you should stay connected. And thankfully, again, that reception strength seems to be satisfactory. I also kind of like the fact that you're able to scroll just by using the D-pad down below there without covering up the screen. Possibly also useful if you are in the winter time and wearing gloves and, for example, you aren't able to really touch the display or if you get it wet. You can access speed dialing just by long pressing on any of the keys from 1 to 9 for a couple of seconds. And if you assign a specific contact, you'll be able to quickly kind of trigger that command without typing in the full number. 
Now I'll also say that the hinge it feels again very robust, uh, but it is traditional like past flip phones of yesteryear and that it only opens up in this one angle. So unlike some of the newer say Galaxy uh, Z Flip devices, it doesn't really hold itself at various unlimited angles. So it's kind of tough to use it in a mini laptop mode for instance. It's kind of holding itself if we are being very cautious with it, but it tries to really snap itself into place uh, the moment that you give it a little bit of a move. You can access Google Lens for scanning and barcodes and objects from here or tap on the three dots to access the lighter version of Google Go. Essentially, this doesn't use background data and only loads consuming data once you open up the program. It doesn't refresh as much in the background, which is why we also saw how there is no kind of Google News Feed to the left of the home screen compared to regular Android. It's one of the small data optimization functions of the Go version of the OS, but once you open it up, you still have all the same capabilities, including checking out trending news, as well as, of course, searching using the Assistant, when it comes to battery life performance, I will see that this is an area where the S22 Flip I think is merely average. Even though the Snapdragon 200 and 400 series chips were once considered energy efficient, and they still kind of are, it's slowly no longer becoming quite as true because this is using an older 28 nanometer architecture for this chip. As a general rule of thumb, the smaller that transistor size, uh, the more power efficient the processors are. Ultimately, battery life will depend on factors like how often you're using the display to run different applications and whether you have services including 4G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS all turn on or off. But I would say in just casual standby mode with cellular on, I was able to get around two to three days that being said, if I'm using the phone a little bit more heavily, running certain YouTube apps, browsing the web here and there, I had to recharge it at the end of about a day, a day and a half or so. So you're not necessarily getting a huge endurance champion on here. Uh, sure, again, the screen is slightly smaller, lower res, so it's a bit easier on the processor to handle. But ultimately, the battery capacity, again, 2,000 milliamp hours is by no means the biggest in this day and age. But thankfully, it charges up pretty quickly using USB Type-C. So just keep that in mind if you are going away for a really long road trip. And last but not least, since it is again running on Android, has access to the standard Play Store, you are able to download casual games on here. So things like puzzle games, tap and play style games, including Stack, will work really without too many problems. And similarly, as we've mentioned, WhatsApp, Twitter, X, Facebook can all be run on here as well. Just be a little bit more patient with it when it first opens up, taking a couple of extra seconds, but once it then loads, it still is, for the most part, quite operational. Uh, that being said, if you're trying to play back more demanding titles and games, I would really not recommend it on here, since again, it is still a very entry-level and kind of aging processor, just to be completely honest. It's by no means going to be a gamer phone. But this is essentially meant for getting the basics done. Things like utility and communication is definitely going to be the forte here. But that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the CAT S22 Flip. Overall, what I'm surprised about is CAT's optimization of the software, which, although super clean, seems to still run a bit more smoothly than you'll expect for a low-end processor like this. And the construction quality is also top-notch. So if you just want something super basic for some occasional kind of news articles, as well as primarily communicating, again, having an excellent speakerphone, very clear microphone with good reception quality, strong build, that's going to be a forte of this device. If interested, you can learn more details in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the kind of cool Cat S22 Flip.